Moshi is asking people are busy grabbing land in Bunchu. When is one of the IPC members going to convince to convince them so that they can feel loved? Moshi I have no doubt at all that a lot of Namibians know that I've got a special place in my heart for all of you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken and left the comfort of my dental practice to concentrate without any salary, without any pay, to try and educate the Namibian people about their rights. I wouldn't have taken the comfort away from myself to go around this country in almost every village and town to speak to the Namibian people and ask you, what is it that you want Namibia to be? That is something that I have done out of a conviction that our people need and deserves better. However, the political party of IPC has made an emphasis on the rule of law. And that emphasis of rule of law is a reflection in our Article 1 of the Namibian Constitution. What we are experiencing is two things. First of all, when I left this country in 1981, there were no informal settlements. There were no high demands for land either. In fact, if anything, the housing that municipalities in the 50s provided by the 70s, there were places we called empty houses or near houses. The government of the Republic of Namibia under the administration of SWAPO has over the past 30 years failed to accommodate the increased urbanization of our towns, not only in Windu, but also in Oshakati, in Utapi, in Katimangulilo, when you go to Shoto and you go to Kaube, you've got people that has got no proper accommodation at all. You've got people that are living on land, not designed properly and properly planned, but just shacks there and there. But that is a reflection of the failure of the Namibian government administration. When we are talking about corruption, corruption is not only in central government. It starts right in the local government. We need also to understand that the actions of the citizens to disregard the rule of law is a reflection of the boiling pot, the rumbling volcano, that then people are coming to a stage where they say, we've had enough. They had enough because government officials and local authority councillors have got multitudes of properties that they accommodated, that accumulated themselves without looking at the people first of all. And it's very easy to provide a policy and to allow for people to be given land. They did that in the 50s. We can do the same thing in the 2021. In the 50s and 60s, municipalities simply in all the towns built houses and rendered themselves as council flats and council houses depending on the needs of the people. And that's something that we can do in Namibia as well. And that would have probably satisfied many of the people's needs. When I was working in a humble Dali Hale in Windu, back in 2015 already, when I just came to Namibia, I was trying to assess what the people's needs are really. And I asked one lady, if I gave you a house in plain Windu, will you take it? And she said, pointing to a shark, and said, I've already got my house. And then I thought to myself, what is the difference between a home and a house? And I said, well, if you didn't have that one, and I give you a three-bedroom in clean window with a swimming pool, and she said, swimming pool with water? Oh, that's a waste of water. What am I going to, will I ever fit there? So what is a home to any of our people that went to demand land? I don't like using the term grabbing rent. Grabbing what? So we need to look at what has happened is a reflection of a boiling pot. How far that anger will be and how long it will be smoldering and being kept a lid on, it's going to be difficult. Again, we need to look between the two. Is the people that are really going to be grabbing land in need of land? Or is it people that has been instigated by other forces to go and try and create an image of, yes, the city council of Windu in which IPC is, is not able to manage it. But we must also understand, at the moment, 
Land grabbing hasn't been new, but at the moment it has been exacerbated by the economic situation brought about in addition to the COVID pandemic, and I hope everybody's keeping safe. As a result of the pandemic, many of the people lost their jobs, and many of them were renting in informal settlements as well. And because they couldn't pay any more rent, they were told by the landowners that, I'm sorry, you cannot stay here, and they had nowhere to go. But the government and the local authority had no contingent plans. Last year, we are not talking about the new councillors that got in to try and clean up and start putting together programs to try and see how we can ameliorate the situation and giving people accommodation and, and, and shelter. But the government right last year, 2019, 2020, and you can stretch it back to 2000, um, uh, uh, 20, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, had no plan whatsoever, no mechanism, nothing at all to try and create a situation to accommodate the increased urbanization that we are having, the increased number of students that are leaving universities looking for jobs. We had no plans. We have created many laws, but implementation was slacking from the councillors and from the administrative people within the local authorities. The battle of blame, therefore, goes to the administration. We, when we saw the situation, myself and the National General Secretary and the chairperson of the party physically drove down there to go and assess the situation and assess the facts and objectivities of what has been reported. And unfortunately, I must stress that the public has been misinformed about the land grabbing initially, the land grabbing that took place at the first time and in Babylon, in Windhoek. And the number of houses that has been told, how many people, and I saw the councillor also emphasizing the fact that throughout her life as a councillor, she's never seen something like that. That was beyond belief that a councillor who's bound by an oath of office, above all to be honest in public office, was able to be economic with the truth and tell the truth to say it was only three structures which were standing, the rest of them four structures, the rest of them were makeshift things that is not even established. The police report clearly indicated only seven structures. And there is a regulation to say that this should not be demolished once they have been established. But many of these people came from renting combustions that they no longer could pay and they had to go and they have been kicked out by their owners. So a contingent plan should have been in place in 2019, 2021, and 2020, 2020, to make sure that the, the situation that has been brought about by the lack of jobs and people being um, uh, losing jobs should have been created. But at the same time, that hasn't taken place. So we have been concerned about the basic human rights of our people, shelter. And that is what the Swapo administration has neglected for 30 years. So, do not come with a sledgehammer to bang onto the IPC head to say, are you concerned with the people who have got no shelter? Yes, we are. But we need to understand that the powers to provide land, to provide housing, in terms of Section 30 of the Local Authorities Act, is subject to approval consultation with the Minister for uh, MURD, Urban and Rural, Rural Development. Development. And the Honorable Utoni, uh, uh, Erastus. Erastus Utoni, will be the one wielding the power to determine, even if we come up with a plan of how to solve this problem, even if we come up with a plan of building loads and loads of accommodation under council, utilizing the water in Hector, utilizing the cement in Orongo, utilizing the unemployed people to be the bricklayers, etc., and even to be the ones that dig the trenches to service the land, or even a plan to give the people land first and then we'll service it later. That will be subject to the ministerial approval. So it's not IPC in local government that holds the key. We may have the ideas, we may have the plans to be able to resolve the problem, but it's up to the minister to then say, go ahead. 
And we have got a very weird situation in Namibia where the provision of land and accommodation and shelter is subject to a ministerial approval. Now, I did start with Article 1, sub Article 2 of the Namibian Constitution, which says, all power shall be based in the people of Namibia who shall exercise their sovereignty through democratically elected institutions. The local authority is a democratically elected institution. And it's really weird that an appointed minister shall be the one to determine whether elected councillors can provide land to the people who need the land, the people on the ground. How can an unelected government official dictate to elected people who have got the electorate's mandate to provide shelter be the one to determine whether that shelter is to be given or not? So, we've got a skewed system in Namibia where the power that has been given to us by the, the voters is not exercised. And we need to understand that. Even if we are in the local authority with the authority to provide services, we have to be very careful in exercising that power responsibly and reasonably as well and fairly. But that exercise of that power is subject to a ministerial approval. And until the minister say, go ahead, some of these plans will never be implemented. And why would the minister belonging to the opposition in the council approve to, to, to IPC councillors to provide shelter to the people? So the people in informal settlements, the people seeking land, your target is not the local authority. Your target is to ensure that the local government's minister approves the provision of land. In Windhoek, in the north of Havana, there is a big land there. And we can provide land for that. We've got another one on the west of Havana as well, another one at Rocky Crest, another one in Babasia. And I believe in Clay Windhoek, there is loads of land that we can resend people from even Havana into Clay Windhoek. After all, we don't have apartheid. And Article 21 says we've got the freedom to settle where we can. And also Article 16 of the Namibian Constitution says that we can buy property anywhere in Namibia. So we are not going to be restricted where we can do that. And the tendency of the local authority to look west when they are seeking to accommodate people in that area is wrong. It has to change. And perhaps we have to think about amending the Local Authorities Act to remove subject to, with the approval of the minister, to remove the ministerial power. In, but we have to do it very carefully because it could soon become a source of exploitation by corrupt officials. Yeah. Sipi, while you are at that, and I, I'm sure the Patriots listening are probably wondering, well, we went out and we voted, these guys are in local authority, now CP is telling us it's subject to ministerial approval. What is their responsibility? What would you say needs to happen that that change happens? What, what, what is your call to action to the listeners out there? We need to understand that we've got three tiers of government in Namibia, Correct. and all these tiers are subject to central government. Yeah. Even if, even if the money for local government entirely does not come from central government, it comes to the rates, taxpayers, the water, electricity that you citizens pay to the local government. Correct. One thing that we need to understand is this, that how can somebody be accountable to somebody who's not responsible for the funding of the service? But in order for the citizens of Namibia to see real change and to really empower IPC to make the decisions and provide the services that you need, you need to clearly go back and examine yourself and look at what happened in the past years, 30 years, and project yourself in the next three years to make the right decision of ensuring that you vote for IPC in government, that we have got the majority in the National Assembly to be able to provide laws that will be serving your needs. As long as we've got a situation where central government is in the hands of the party that has destroyed this country, 
in a party that has been looting this country, whose leaders retire onto their farms, whose leaders are content with corruption. You as Namibians, the key is in your hands. In order for us to have a responsive government to your needs, we need to ensure that we have a responsive government from local, regional to central government. So my message to you is start now to prepare for 2024 for the government in waiting so that we can get a resounding landslide victory just like our brothers did yesterday in Zambia to make sure we can then have substantive changes in the manner in which we are governed, in the manner in which we deliver services, and in the manner in which we can turn around the economic disaster that we've got into a growth, intelligent economy that will be able to empower you. So what the Namibians need to do is to go and vote IPC. Wonderful.